I got a killer new pickup today and I want to show it to you. I am not overstating it when I say this is one of my dream snakes that I've always dreamt of having. Let's check them out. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It is your good buddy Adam at Proper Royals. Today is a mighty special day on a couple different levels. If we haven't met before, before we get to that, uh, this channel is all about my family's ball python hobby and our journey to a ball python business. You can follow us on all the socials below in the description. We got a link to our Morph Market store and even a link to our collection of NFTs if you're into that sort of thing. So the pickup that I got I'm just kind of beaming. I'm excited about it. Look, when you see it, you're going to go, all right, that's cool, but it's maybe not as a dream snake. But I'll tell you, this is the snake that, or this is the gene that I remember 20 plus years ago when I was in college owning a couple normal bottle pythons and the store had one of these and it was like five figures. I mean, it was unreal. It was just like, it was like this new thing that just may as well have been $2 million. I was never gonna have one. I don't know why, I never, there was just never one at the right price or the right scenario. They're not the most expensive snakes in the world. They're pretty common, but it's just really cool. And, and then there's this kind of full circle moment I'm gonna tell you about as well. But let's check out this snake. Let's, I'm not gonna keep you waiting. Uh, we'll, we'll enjoy it together. We'll bask in the story together. How about that? All right, guys, this is my new pickup. As you can see, it is a Paul, Paul. It is a piebald or pied ball python. And I think he's just beautiful. I would call him low to medium white. Just one big splotch of white. And then actually, to me, it's really cool because his tail comes back, uh, back in with the pattern. And I don't know how well it picks up. Hopefully not too washed out. But look at the oranges on the sides there. It's almost like it is yellow belly. I'm gonna mess with the autofocus real quick. Hang on, let's try this again. All right, guys, let's try this again. There's the focus we're looking for. So look at the oranges on this guy. You really see it right there. And the contrast up close, yeah. And he's got the one freckle in the middle. I love it, I love it. Otherwise, just pure, pure white, top and bottom. Pure, clean, white, beautiful belly. He's just a beautiful animal, and I'm pumped to have him. And this is what I was talking about that really got me reignited with ball pythons was like, so after you know nearly two decades, I start getting back into ball pythons or thinking I might want to, and I look on Morph Market and like, anybody can have one of these pides now. And I just never got around to getting one. I was really close at a reptile show. Um, I almost bought one. And I was there with uh, my wife Kelly and my son Charlie. And I, I put it to a vote, like thinking that the pied was a slam dunk, you know? And I was like, oh, let's take a vote. What, do we want the, the, the pied or do we want the uh, mystic potion? And I had the money, I was plunking it down, and I couldn't believe it. They both voted for the Mystic Potion. <laughs> Guess that's what I get for putting something to a vote that I didn't have, I didn't go into with good, honest intentions. I thought I had that vote in the bag. So I didn't get a pie that day. And then the story on this one is uh, kind of a lot of layers, and I promise there's this cool twist at the end that's really kind of neat to me. I do keep an eye on local Craigslist ball python ads. I rarely pursue them for all the obvious reasons, both from a Craigslist standpoint that's kind of gotten sketchy, you know, it's it's a, so scammy and exhausting. Getting to know the breeders and knowing who's reputable and, and figuring out who you want to buy from and that sort of thing, also super dodgy, but I got to meet this guy. I got to check him out. What we did, actually, I, I really didn't, again, wasn't in a position to go buying. And by the way, this is a male. He's at 1,400 grams. He is, he is ready to breed. He's going to go into my projects right away. He's going to fast forward me and double my odds to create pides. Speaking of things that I didn't think I'd be doing for some time. At any rate, I, di I didn't have, I didn't want to spend the cash. I didn't want, I wanted one, but I wanted to be disciplined. But 
I had one, one, one hatchling left. So this story is also about me getting all my hatchlings gone this year. So I had one female hatchling left and I just threw it out there. I said, look, man, here's who I am. Here's my YouTube channel. Here's what I do. Um, and here's the history of the babies that I have and, and, and. And I said, would you do a straight up trade? We're, we're, we're pretty close in value, to tell you the truth. And uh, he says, yeah, I'll do it. So then I said, uh, oh, look, man, I need to know a little bit about you. I want to know about, you know, how you keep your facility, what you've been up to. Been at it for five years. He's telling me about the breeders that he buys from, where he sources his stock. But then we get talking and he says, yeah, this is a this this snake comes from a really good breeder. And uh, he says it comes from Kai at Lucas Landon Royals. But Kai and I are pretty good buddies, like reasonable buddies. He's been on my show a time or two. As far as the ball python world goes, he's been very good to me. And, and he's as much of a buddy as anybody else that I know. So I checked Kai and Kai goes, yeah, that is my old snake. That's him. So it's just a cool all around great feeling time. And I'm really proud to have this snake. I'll tell you more about my pie project soon. For now, I'm going to get this guy put away, get him situated. And until next time, see ya.